Good morning, welcome to Headline Focus, here live on Core Politics with me, Rob Double. It is Tuesday the 9th uh, of October 2018. Let's have a look at what's making the news. And to start off with, a cabinet minister, uh, in fact, the International Development Secretary, Penny Morden, is taking to the stage, uh, making a speech today specifically uh, on Brexit and her vision of a post-Brexit world in terms of aid. But one of the key questions coming through on the political agenda today is whether Penny Morden, one of the very few remaining Brexit uh, backing ministers, uh, is going to be supporting Theresa May's checkers plan or whether she's going to be making any warm words at all in terms of Theresa May's Brexit checkers plan. Now, as you can see here, The Guardian's actually immediately uh, covered something saying uh, Penny Morden refuses uh, to explicitly back uh, May's Chequers plan. Actually, let's have a look at the, the quote here that's coming through from the Press Association uh, on when he, she was asked specifically about the Chequers plan this morning. Uh, she said, the Prime Minister can count on my support, but what I would say is that we don't know where this is going to end up. We are at a critical moment right now. The ball is firmly back in the EU's court. We are waiting for them to respond. So, you know, relatively vague, uh, but, you know, an element of, you know, obscurity there, But then uh, she got, does go on to say, according to the reports in the Press Association, that so she, the Prime Minister, has my support and I'm not in any way expecting that situation to change. Now that for me um, seems like she's definitely uh, supportive of Theresa May, supportive of Theresa May's Brexit plan, uh, with an element of we don't know what the final outcome is going to be, but certainly they're committing her support uh, and saying in, uh, you know, in the future, is, I don't see how it's going to change, is f seems to be a warm words from uh, the Cabinet Minister. She's of course only one of two Cabinet Ministers who hasn't actually revealed her, her Brexit idea or rather hasn't revealed her thoughts on Chequers' plan until now. That's very significant, of course, because she is a relatively senior member of the Cabinet, very significant member of the Cabinet, uh, particularly in the context of backing uh, Brexit. Now, in terms of uh, other reports going on in the world of Downing Street and indeed Theresa May, uh, Tim Shipman from the Sunday Times reporting that Penny Morden has been barred by Number 10 uh, from briefing out the speech because it's set... Um, not to praise Chequers at all, might be very lukewarm, might actually not even mention Chequers, possibly. Uh, we'll find out when she gives it later on today. Uh, but there also this time Sam's Coates reporting uh, that May will convene a meeting of helpful, and that's in brackets, cabinet ministers to plan a soft landing uh, for the eventual Brexit deal, basically recruiting a number of cabinet ministers to go around, who are happy to go around and make the PR case to make the um, public relations campaign uh, to convince people that the Brexit deal is actually a success after um, clearly you've got so many uh, MPs within the Conservative Party who are not happy with the Chequers plan in terms of what it's going to be delivering uh, and the type of Brexit people voted for, which is the key line uh, which comes through on disgruntled members uh, of the backbench on the Conservative Party. Next up, though, what's going on in Brussels and the DUP today? Now, Arlene Foster, the leader of the DUP, uh, Democratic Unionist Party, obviously propping up to some extent Theresa May in government with their seats in Westminster, is holding three days, three days of talks with key EU players uh, over the next three days, including today a 30-minute discussion with Barnier, uh, Michel Barnier, who's, of course, the EU's chief negotiator. Now, reports are that she's expected to reiterate the red line, the key red line from the DUP, which is causing such a, a firm problem for Theresa May, is that there can be no new border between Britain, the UK mainland, and Northern Ireland. The crucial word is no border in the Irish Sea, and therefore the plan of the backstop which the EU have proposed, which is to have the Northern Ireland in some kind of regulatory alignment with the uh, Re Republic of Ireland, aka the EU, uh, and the UK being able to do something different and having a border in the Irish Sea is a massive no-no and such a cause of the Brexit uh, negotiations to be slowing down that backstop issue on Ireland. Um, Interesting, though, there is some reports where there's a lack of clarity over what the DUP under Arlene Foster is actually particularly the red line is going to be about. So there's uh, rumours or reports coming through today that there could be, uh, you know, there's a priority from Arlene Foster that there must be no barriers for goods travelling from Northern Ireland to the mainland. And that's giving some, uh, some speculation that, uh, you know, checks on goods travelling in the opposite direction might be okay, aka uh, to Northern Ireland from the mainland might be in some way agreeable to the DUP. These are all very hypotheticals, these are all very uh, unknowns. Obviously the, the Irish issue is something which is really the sticking point of the negotiations. Uh, but one crucial aspect of this is that tomorrow the EU was due to publish, and in fact Michel Barnier was due to publish the EU's proposal for a post-Brexit trade deal, very important for Theresa May in terms of showing that the EU and the UK will have a prosperous post-Brexit relationship. 
Uh, it's now going to be changed to a sort of joint text uh, between the UK and the EU to avoid triggering what his reports are, to avoid triggering, triggering an explosion from, you know, Brexiteers who are very unhappy or might be unhappy by the EU's position in terms of the post-trade deal. So no doubt expect some line from Arlene Foster and Michel Barnier a little bit later on today, something to watch out for. One other thing, one other big speech being made today, uh, well, big if you are, I suppose, if you live in Scotland, but also in the UK more widely, is Nicola Sturgeon, the leader of the Scottish National Party. Still conference season up there. Uh, she's due to be making her annual speech as leader at around about 3.15 this afternoon. Already be making a few headlines you should know about in terms of what's been going on at conference up, up, here, up there. Uh, the SNP MPs would vote for a second EU referendum uh, if such an option were tabled uh, in Parliament. That's significant because they do have quite a significant amount of MPs uh, on the green benches down in Westminster still. Uh, but also, uh, Nicola Sturgeon suggested Scotland should be offered a similar deal to Northern Ireland from the EU and the UK in the sense of the eventual backstop, which would keep, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Northern Ireland within some kind of regulatory alignment uh, with the EU, being able to ensure there's no border there between the UK and the EU. Uh, and uh, the UK mainland would do its own thing. Nicola Sturgeon now pushing for Scotland should be able to have its own regulatory alignment with the EU separate to the UK mainland uh, as well. Something I'm sure, uh, I haven't seen any reports on it, but I'm sure will not be going down particularly well or have any kind of reception uh, in Downing Street. That's pretty much it for today. You're up to date. Don't forget you can find all the latest on what I'm doing here on Core Politics on our Facebook page and Twitter right here. But from me and all the team here at Core London, have a fantastic rest of your day. See you tomorrow.